Verisa starts her journey as she leaves her hometown of Hamlet, seeking her destiny as a cleric of the Lord of War. The first steps of her journey are uneventful, except for encountering a hung man, bearing a mysterious warning about the beleaguered men. She encounters a strange merchant in a pointy hat named Pringle, who shares his lunch in exchange for information about Lake Shimmerstone next to Hamlet. After they part ways, she reaches the town of Threndle and starts asking questions about the beleaguered men. Her questioning draws the attention of a mysterious stranger whom she follows later as he leaves town and discovers him meeting another man some distance from town. Both men turn out to be beleaguered men. The initial conversation is tense, but they agree to let Verisa join them after she passed a trial with flying colours, and they lead her to their headquarters. She learns that the beleaguered men used to be soldiers that are owed money and decide to steal what they were owed. After an interview with Falstead, leader of the beleaguered men, in which she reveals that she is a cleric of Bellum, she is welcomed into the group. The next day she heads off with the group to commit robberies. A wagon eventually comes along, but when confronted by Verisa, it turns out to be a trap, as soldiers jump out and immediately attack. But after a brutal display of power by the beleaguered men, half the attackers are killed and the rest flee. As the new recruit Verisa is charged with selling the wagon in Dundorian, which she does on her return through Threndle, she notices Pringle talking to his cat. They decide to travel together, and it's not long before the beleaguered men springs an ambush. Pringle gives up his wagon without a fight, but claim to have cursed it. But Verisa and the beleaguered men take it with them anyway. They split up with Felstead, taking the wagon to a barn, and the rest going towards HQ. Not long before word reaches them about another attack on their men near Ritule. Some men question whether or not Verisa is a spy. But she manages to reassure some of them, and they decide to turn their attention to investigating the attack at Ritule. Once there, they find out one of the bandits survived and is being held prisoner. They concoct a plan to help him. And that's how, not long after, Verisa ended up in a prison catfight. Using her divine powers, she manages to start a prison riot. In the chaos, Verisa and the bandit manage to escape. But once they get to safety, they find out that the bandit was too wounded to save. Will they make it back to HQ? Will Verisa turn the ragtag group of bandits into the Will of Bellum? Find out next time on Dicing with Death. Hello everybody and welcome back to Dicing with Death with Ryan, Neil, and Verissa. Ryan, how's it going? Ryan slash Verissa. Go going well, going well. Excellent. How about yourself? Are the internet stable? Uh, the internet is friends? stable. There's rumors running around about sharks having eaten cables. And the internet did crap out while I was streaming yesterday. And it did drop when we tried to stream right now. But everything else looks stable. Um, so we're gonna we're just gonna see how it goes. It should be fine, but you know, Vietnamese sharks are they, they have a taste for, for plastic and metal and rubber. Let's quickly get me those that magic war hammer before the internet drops. <laughs> of course. So, uh, did you get a chance to actually hear the recap, Ryan? I did listen to it on the stream. Have Excellent. You, have you not? No, I, I I listened to it too. I just needed to know if we needed to recap you. So. Okay. Nope, I'm good to go. I think cool. We are in, in this hotel room mm -hmm. in Darden. Mm-hmm. Me and one of the beleaguered men. I can't even remember which one it was. Um, 
maybe rich i don't know the guy that i snuck into the city with right and we just mercy killed the prisoner who was right well, i have notes slowly dying of his torturous wounds what is this Oh, okay. No, those are notes for a very different show. Where are your notes? Where Where's notes for Ryan? That's not Ryan. I am the hung man, Gorlork. Yes. Maybe I don't have any notes for you. Maybe, maybe I didn't take any notes for Ryan whatsoever, and that's why I can't find them. You often don't. I... I often don't. Yes. All I saw was the note about Red the Dick Sucker, and was like, I don't remember introducing <laughs> Ryan to a character named what Red the Dick Sucker. <laughs> what campaign is that? That sounds like misclicks. Actually, it's solemn. Really? Yeah. They <laughs> they freed a slave, a couple of slaves, and then when asking what they did for their master before, one of them was like, Oh, I did this, this, and that, and the other guy's like, Oh, yeah, I, I suck dicks. Yeah, that's what I do for my master. Oh, it was a, um it was a strange episode uh okay so and that's why we have a mature content warning on our on the stream yes indeed yeah um so you're you're hanging out in this hotel room yeah and... we just yeah put the body um yeah Let's get some some music going. What, I'm trying what you... to decide what, I, what to do with the body. I doubt we're going to be able to get it out of the city uncontested. You're the guy with you goes, uh, get it out of the city? Are you crazy? This is... Okay. <clears throat> Just leave the poor bastard here. Wouldn't be the first Very person well. to be found dead in a hotel room. I doubt anyone would think twice about it. There we I go. wonder if we should use the body to send a message. Oh, well, that's a clever idea. What sort of message would you want to send? This is still, you know, the middle of the day, so there's hustling and bustling. All yeah, in I think and around. It's... Was it evening? I have no idea what time it was. I think it was. Uh, it was probably noon. first thing in the morning because yeah. I had just memory spells that staged the prison break first out into the streets. Right, but it so was, was dark down room. there, so it was the start of your day. But you don't get fed in the mornings. Actually, you get fed when the guards get around to it, which is actually like ten or eleven. So it's still in the a.m., but just mm -hmm. barely. It's like just about noon. Okay. Um, so the guy with you goes, well, what what message I, do you want to send? I think perhaps we leave this body for the guards to deal with. It is their mess, after all. He nods. It's not much of a message. Leave a note. All right. Well, what does it say? What should it say? Beware the beleaguered men. He smiles. That, that worked so well last time. <laughs> yeah, but it also got us attacked, as you pointed out. I think we're beyond worrying about that. Alright. The things they've done are unspeakable. This, this is an act of war. Unspeakable? I yeah. gestured to the belly of the body next to us. Well. Yeah. Unspeakable acts. All right. Let's get out of here. Um, he goes downstairs and comes back a few moments later with some parchment. Uh, and oh, perfect. I was worried I was going to have to go do this. No. He, okay. He's got it. Can so he, he write, grabs your stuff, or grabs grabs the stuff. There's like a little quill and ink in the room. Um, mm -hmm. Pulls it out, jots some notes down, sticks it on the guy's chest. He uh, is able to to write. Yes, yes, he is. Okay. Okay. Um, 
I know where the captain of the guard is lives. Perhaps we should drop this on his doorstep on our way out of town. Uh, he smiles at you and goes, yeah, I know where he lives too, but perhaps we I should I start rolling the body up in the bed sheets. Uh, he looks at you and is like, I... Oh, all right, all right. You've been right so far. And he helps you roll up the body in the bed sheet. Um, and a few moments later, you have a, a corpse in a bed sheet. Hope you're ready to run. You give him a smile and a wink. And I lead the way down the stairs. Okay, I found my notes. Um, I do only have nine strength. Well, between the two of so you, we may be carry like a body. dragging, drag carrying this body. Yeah, I mean, like you get the I feet, he gets the mind. arms, or not necessarily the feet and arms, but like he grabs one end of the sheet and you grab the other. And between the two of you, you can like slowly move a body. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I go first, and I hope that plain peasant woman. I mean, he's. He was hmm. stitched. I guess he did. I don't know. I try to like wrap him in such a way that whatever wound was dealt to him on the back of his neck in the mercy kill isn't bleeding profusely out of the band or out of the out of the blankets. Well, I mean, he's been lying there dead for a little while. Um, but that said, there is like a nice pool of blood on the sheets. Um, so you're you're gonna have Hello. some red spots. Do you want the red spots on the top or on the bottom? On the top is less likely to drip, but is more visible. On the bottom is more likely to leave a blood trail, but will be I harder to see. On the top, I, I'm not really thinking too much about that. I okay. Mean, at this point, it's like yeah, there's blood stains, up or down. I'm hoping that you know a woman walking down the street. Huh? Unarmed and plain clothes will not be, not be molested. But we'll see what the dice say. We will see. Okay, so let's let's make some rolls as you and uh, this is Brandon. Okay. You uh, and Brandon uh, carry this poor fella. Oh no. Okay. Uh, uh, you come downstairs, and the common room is not too terribly busy at this point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 door manager, the the doorkeeper, the innkeeper, um, <laughs> kind of <just> watches <laughs> you guys slowly come down the stairs, carrying something between the sheets. Well, um, we walked in with the book guy, actually. Yeah. So I mean, he saw us bring in a wounded person, mm -hmm. and now we're bringing him out. Um, he scratches his head um, and gives oh. you guys a quizzical look, but doesn't say anything. Okay. If he doesn't say anything, I might. I was thinking I would pay him off, but at this point, no. He, you know, he doesn't mean, bother. Peop medieval towns are pretty shitty for the common folk. I mean, people die, and you got to deal with the bodies. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, as you guys get to the door and start to head out, he goes. Will you be paying for those sheets? Um, I'll hand him three silver coins. I hope that's a reasonable price for sheets. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, it's an awkward moment where you're like holding these legs and you like stop and like <laughs> reach one hand in a purse and like jingle around, and get some coins and like toss them to him. And yeah, it's it's a little bit of it's quite the scene. Um, but he gets his payment. <laughs> And proceeds to head back, uh, and you know, just you know, proceeds to watch you guys as you head out the door. I'm few, never going to be allowed in this town again. <laughs> a few moments later, you bust out into the busy streets of some town. Darden. Darden. There we go. Uh, On the western shores of Shimmerstone Lake. Yes, Darden. Oh, we should get a freaking roll, uh, Jason with death link to where we are. I don't know why there's not one already. Uh, this is a little bit crazy. Nobody loves dicing with death. Are you kidding? Everybody loves dicing with death. <laughs> it's like everyone's favorite show. Um, Nobody right. being Neil, who codes the website. <laughs> <laughs> it's everybody's favorite show. You know, me and you and... 
And a couple of people in chat. A couple of cool people in chat. Scores of people in chat. Who have great taste, by the way. They, they really know their content yeah. qualities. Congratulations to you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, you, you make it out of well, you make it out to the streets and head towards the the captain of the guard's house. You make it back there. You get a few quizzical looks along the way, but as you said, medieval towns, uh, lots of people die, and normally mm -hmm. you just haul them around in wheelbarrows or between two other people. But you know, people give you a glance. Some people move kind of far away. Some people make you know holy gestures on their faces and stuff. Um, and so it's pretty, <laughs> so much for being discreet about it. It's it's obvious we're walking down the street with the body. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially with the blood stains on top, it's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, no one gives you shit about it. You know, you got to transport a body somehow. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you make your way. You and get I'm right up to the that, innkeeper. I'm assuming nothing. the captain of the guard is very preoccupied with the prison break. So yeah, it's the middle of the day. He's not home. He's off yeah. doing shit. So. I, yeah, we approach his house, I look up and down the street, realize I don't really give a shit, yeah. and throw the bundle on the doorstep. Do I see, are, are there people around? Yeah. Yep. All right, uh, I'm not even gonna bother like unrolling the bed sheets or preparing it, we just leave it right there. Okay. We're all wrapped up with a note inside. And yeah, uh, oh, with the note on the inside? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, because the note was attached to his chest before I wrapped him up. So okay. it'll be like a, it'll be like a bundle of cloth, and when they unwrap it, there will be the body with the, with the note. Okay. Uh, you guys leave the corpse and move on. And sprint to the nearest alley. Okay, you guys make it to the nearest alley, uh, and have a moment to we, yourselves. I, I keep, keep us moving. Oh, okay, so yeah, you make it to the alley, go on through to the other side of the to the other street, and start walking down. Brandon says so. Should probably head back to home now. Yeah, we need to warn them. Hopefully, we get there before. I think we'll, I think the city guard will be too preoccupied with the prison break to no. pursue just, whatever leads they gathered. Let's just hope they didn't send anyone out beforehand. Before the break, they had all of. Let's see. All of who? They wouldn't have had a lot of time. Mm -hmm. They. I think they tortured him the first day I was in. So they would have had to send people out that night. Yeah, I just hope he didn't break fully. Well. Should I not say anything? Because my DM didn't take very good notes. Your DM took notes. <laughs> he he broke. I mean, he he gave names of at least the leadership. But he broke fully, as in like location of base. Hell, I can't even find the base. So. No. <clears throat> so we head to the north yeah. gate of town. So you start walking towards the north gate of town on your way out, um, and at a certain point, you're just kind of passing down a. A smaller street because you're, you're keeping off the main streets or at least yeah. Brandon is leading you off the main streets and you mm -hmm. end up passing down a quiet street it's not that quiet you know there's still people around but it's it's like if we're walking down the suburb streets you know there's like a guy down there and there's like a guy over here but it's there's a lot of space between people um, and you come around this bend and you see just three city guards hanging out in the middle of the street chatting with one another um, not too unusual, except for the fact that there's a prison break, mm -hmm. uh, and you would expect all the guards to is be busy. There, so, yeah, is there a casual way to change our path? I mean, you're walking down. Our, you know, you've walked down the street before and seen like a couple of cops hanging out down at the end. You know, down like a half block away from you. You can change your path if you'd like, or you can walk. I mean, past is there them. is there a side street we could turn down before we get to them? No, you'd or... kind of just have like turn around and go a different way. How many people are there? On There's the street, three like, three guards. Could I, could I find a crowd? I mean, to no, no, no. The the streets are pretty empty. There's people around, but they're they're not heavily laden with travelers. I will just I will link Brandon's arm and turn us right around the other direction, just sort of casually. Okay. 
All right, so you, you turn around and start walking away, and you hear one of the, oh, the guards call me. after you guys. We don't bite, pretty lady. Come on down and say hi. I'll, I'll turn around and blow him a kiss and keep walking the opposite direction. Ooh, give me a charisma check. Ooh. Do, do you have high charisma? No. My stats are mediocre across the board. Actually, charisma is one of my higher stats. That's a beautiful Ryan. 12. <laughs> Don't let any man tell you otherwise. 25, so a, a passable gesture. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, he pretends to catch it, and they, the, the three guards laugh, and you guys turn around and go a different way. Guess they weren't looking for us. No, they're just hanging out. Um, yeah, we walk down the side street, or not the parallel street, or whatever. We probably take a meandering way towards the gate. Which yeah. I hope is open. Do you eventually make it back to the, the north gate, which is actually closed, and you see a, a line of people um, kind of, not really, it's more of like a blob of people up next to the gate, and they're all kind of yelling and shouting at the gate, guys. Uh, there's a couple of carts, like four or five carts that are stuck inside the gates, and you can see their angry riders, like, Drivers like yeah. waving their so face. So I imagine we, we sort of hunch behind a building or a shed or something a little ways down the street and yeah, take in the scene. Um, hmm. um, so as like you're guards. you're hunched back here watching, you notice mm -hmm. the the gate open and a few people leave and then the gate shut and like the line like the, the blob gets a little bit smaller and a little bit closer. I think you can get out, I say to to Brandon. But they'll probably be looking for me. He nods slowly. Alright, I'll I'll Don't get wait. out, I'll head back, warn them. Do you know the way back yeah. on your own? Uh, I can find it well enough. Alright, if not, just meet us at the rock and we'll we'll send someone out in the next day or two to find you. Do you have any coin? He pats around in his pockets and goes, uh, a few. I'm hoping I won't need to bribe anyone, though. Might just draw suspicion. I mean, I th I'm near out. A couple of silver for an inn tonight. Couldn't hurt. Oh, I see. Yeah. He fishes around his pocket and hands you a fistful of silver coins. Uh, you get 23 coins right. of silver color and material. So I, okay. So I'm just gonna leave. The, I'll let him. I'll I'll wait a couple blocks from the. Yeah. So I he I assume he goes and waits in line. Yeah, I mean he pushes up into line. Yeah. Um, While he makes his way himself. through, I'm gonna go, gonna go purchase a new shirt, because I have a I took a spear wound, okay. and have blood stains on mine. Yep. And uh, yeah. then I'll come back and make sure that Brandon makes it to the gate okay. Yeah, so you, you get a shirt, come back, and you can't even see Branton in the crowd. He's gone somewhere. He's either pushed his way to the front or been caught and hung. Well, I assume I was only gone a few minutes. So. Yeah, I mean, it takes like 15 minutes to go find a place to buy a shirt, and then, you know, five minutes like to buy the shirt, and then like 15 minutes to get back. And... It seemed like the line was... It, yeah, it's, kind of, it's a big blob. It's not an organized, civilized Western line. It's... And it costs eight silver. Does that sound sure. reasonable to you? That sounds reasonable. It sounds a little... No, that sounds about right. Sounds, sounds pricier than I was expecting. Oops, sorry. But again, it takes... Weaving cloth is difficult. You don't have... Yeah. I mean, you've got sweatshops filled with small children, but it's still more expensive than mass-produced, electronically mm -hmm. woven. Um, yeah. So I'll hang around by the gate for long enough that I'm satisfied he made it out. Mm-hmm. Or at least that, yeah, make sure no com there's no commotion. Yeah. And then I will find a, an in room. Uh, not the same in as before. Okay. And. Yeah, I guess that's the best I can do. Okay, so you go around to find an in room, and there's an in very near that, the north entrance. Um, mm -hmm. 
I guess you you were hiding like about a, a half block down from the the gate, and yeah. another half block away, so like a full block from the gate, is a, a shiny tavern. It's got a sign hanging out front. Uh, you're le- you're literate, right? You are literate. I I can read. Yes, yeah. I have uh, a reading writing proficiency. The dangling sign says the silver crock pot out front. And, Seems uh, like a terrible material to make a crock pot out of. Yeah, that's a reasonable thing to thing to think. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you you walk on in and give me one of those fanciful perception checks of yours that we also love to make. Yeah, well, not me. That's my lowest stat. Nope. Nope. You walk in, uh, go up to the innkeeper, ask for a room. He's like, all right, you know, room and board for a day, five silver. Very standard. Fork up the five silver. Uh, He sends a a waitress to go show you to your room. uh, Just so that you know where it is. And then you come on back down to the common room for food, I take it? Or are you just going to hide up in your room all day? Uh, Yeah, I haven't eaten, so I will get my food. Yeah. And then hide in my room. All yes. right, you come down. Uh, you're, there's a nice spot near the bar. You pull mm-hmm. up, start making your food. And What's the clientele like? Is this now that I spot the guard? Uh, this is now that you, you're starting to eat. You're starting to look around. As you like look to your left, you feel a tap on your right. Mm-hmm. And, and you look back. And who should be standing there but a tall, lanky, skinny man in blue robes with a pointy hat holding a cat in his hands? Pringle. Pringle, you damn near gave me a heart attack. Well, well, well. Look what Miss Scruffles dragged in, he says, petting his cat. That Miss Scruffles? On a good day. And the cat oh. kind of goes, Row! as if it, like, understands and is mad at him for calling it Miss Scruffles. Shh, pets the cat. He goes, so, give me one good reason not to turn you in. You're a brigand, you know. <laughs> brigand? I'll have you know I am a woman of God. You robbed me. You took my mer- merchant cart. My whole livelihood. I, I didn't lay a finger on the cart. You gave it over to those that would. That ain't much better. What was I supposed to do? Fight them off for you? They had Maybe tell number. me that they were down that road. Maybe say, hey, Pringle, you're a good guy. Don't go down here. By the way, I'm with the the beleaguered men. Maybe, maybe not. Why shouldn't I turn you in? Don't hang us both if you talk like that too loud. It gives a little bit of a frown. Look, they surprised me, same as they surprised you. Just because I happen to be on their good side doesn't change nothing. Hmm. If I had known they were waiting there for you, I, I would have, I would have warned you. Mm-hmm. If I recall, I even tried to convince them to leave you be, you and your cursed cart. Yeah, yeah. What'd they do with it? Um. They have a storage yard somewhere on the north banks of the Shimmerstone Lake. Really? Don't know where it is. You interested in helping me get that back? We'll call it even between us if you can get me my cart back, safe and sound. Can you get me out of this town? I can get you out of this town if you get me my cart back. Let's see what we can do. Alright. He motions for you to follow him, and he heads up to his bedroom. Alright, right, head upstairs. All right. He walks upstairs, he, you know, holding his cat the whole way. And once you guys get in the room, he picks up his cat by the arms, so it's facing him and goes, Okay. 
Now, I need you to turn this guy invisible for me, all right? The cat goes, Row. it's like, no, come on, <laughs> come on, we, we got to do it. We got to get out of here, we got to get the cart back. And the cat's, it's like, come on. And then he turns to face the cat towards you, like, here, hold this. Uh, the cat has, like, this bluish fur and is kind of, like, blown cat awkwardly under its front armpits and okay. just, like, dangle it down. This is at you a little bit. It's, <laughs> it's paws hair. flopping in the air. Its hair starts to stand up, but um, after a few moments, uh, you kind of see your skin turn translucent, and you can see the flesh underneath, and the flesh underneath turns translucent. You can see your bones, and that turns translucent. You can just kind of see right through yourself a little bit. Um, you have like a, a slightly greenish hue to you. Um, well, and I'll be damned. So the cat's the wizard, not you. Uh, he goes and takes the cat back from you. Does that make you the pet? The familiar? I, I'm, I am the keeper here. <laughs> well, let's see about getting you your cart. Poor Safi was a uh, was polymorphed into a cat by a, a, a roaming witch. I've been trying to get her unpolymorphed. Luckily, she's she's retained her spell casting abilities even in cat form. And uh, I've learned cat, so we can communicate. <laughs> Does it, cats have their own language? Well, of course, cats have their own language. Don't you, humans and orcs and... Are we having this conversation as we're walking to the gate? Yeah. Crazy yeah. old man talking to his cat. Mm -hmm. So you walk down towards the gate. Um, and again, there's that big line out front. And he's like, all right, well, you're invisible, but people can still bump into you. So... Uh, I huddle up close to... Um, what's his name? Pringle. So I, I guess I just sort of spoon him awkwardly from behind, mm -hmm. hands on his waist, and congo our way up to the front of the line. Yeah, uh, you guys we slowly make your line. way through the line. It's it's like a half hour process. And once you get to the front, I mean, you know, the, the doors will open, so people will leave. The doors will shut. Talking mm -hmm. open, leave shut. Um, you get to the front of the line, and one of the guards looks at the the old man up and down, sees the cat, and's like, "Didn't we just let you in earlier?" And then's like, yes, yes, and I've done my business. It's time for me to go now. And the guy's like, ugh. Yeah, I saw him come in earlier. He's definitely not the people we're looking for. And the, the gate opens, and you guys walk right on through. Uh, you walk out the other side, and you see that there are two guards, you know, on the t uh, top watching pretty carefully out over the, the entrance on the other side. But you make your way down the road to the point where the guards so can't see you anymore. Four guards in total at the at the gate. Two on the inside, two on the top. Uh, no, there's two on the top, and at this point there are four on the inside, with okay. all the all the commotion going on. Normally that's only like three people on a gate, but mm -hmm. today it seems that there's six. All right. Well, we travel north along the road. Travel north along the road, and Probably eventually your invisibility, invisibility wow. spell wears off. Um, and yeah, you let's, let's take a look at the map of Darden, or of the, the surrounding area. Yeah, so I think... Uh, yeah. So the bandit camp was like between... It was just south of Ritual. Yeah. Correct? Yes. And then somewhere south of there along the lake, they supposedly have a shed or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still a little, it's like two in the afternoon and yeah. it'll take you all day to get to Lilith Ma and you'll pretty much only show up in the evening. I almost don't know that we want to go to Lilith Ma. I'm thinking of going off road, like near the crest of the lake and following the lakeshore. Mm. So while we're chatting, I'll say, so Pringle, um, you used to comfortable feather beds or shall we take to the forest i i love a good feather bed but i'm not so old and crotchety that i can't spend a night roughing it out in the woods if it means getting back my cart now i've never seen their storage facility myself mm -hmm. they said it was south of their hideout 
on the north banks of the of the lake. Mm-hmm. Well, lake shore is pretty long. I guess we could spend a couple of days poking around looking for it. And off you guys go. We. Maybe we should go to Lilith Ma and resupply. You, got, you don't have food? Look at me. He shrugs. All right. It's a little small. Got out of jail yesterday. Okay. Um, you um, guys make your way to Lilith Ma. The road is empty. There's no sign of beleaguered men anywhere. And... You pull into Lilith Maw after a long, empty road. It seems that um, yeah, you don't actually meet anyone on the road the whole day, which is a little unusual. Normally, there's foot traffic one way or the other. But, I'm surprised uh, there's no one coming south. Oh, uh, yeah. Exactly. Um, you get to Lilith Maw, the, the tiny little town that it is, and are greeted at the entrance by uh, a small group of people who are kind of standing around chatting and as you approach like oh hey hey what happened what happened uh with what Say darden we, we heard there was a prison break i hence the lack of traffic they're slowly letting people out thanks expecting everyone yeah right. that's the last few people said we were hoping that you had some more information about the break itself can't say that I do. They all look dejected and sad, like they were really hoping to get that juicy bit of gossip. Um, and, yeah, they ignore you from that point on, just go back to their conversation amongst themselves. I'm no Qualnir. I'll let the, let the peasants spread rumors for me. I don't did, need to be feeding this fire quite yet. As a, a side note, did you know that rules as written in second edition, thieves get plus four on back attacks when they make a sneak attack. Plus four to hit? Uh-huh. Not plus two. They get plus four to as, hit. As an exception? Yeah, it's at, it? under the, the thief section under backstab. I did not. Yeah, I maybe didn't even... read that. Maybe we read that and assumed that that was including surprise, but it must be... Oh, you know what? That's totally what it is. Because it's when attacking someone by surprise and from behind. Yeah. 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 Well then. So in the in the rules as written, you only get backstab when you're surprising someone. Mm-hmm. Which I usually house rule to be just any attack to the back. Yeah. But it's an interesting way of doing things. Yeah, that's what they did in later editions. They just made it like from behind, or Isn't... you have advantage or whatever. Yeah, which then just kind of gets ridiculous because then. I think I think that gets rid of the backstab notion of it. Like, yeah. surprise shanking notion. Because if you're, like, standing in front and you're like, I have some high ground. Now I can backstab you for super damage. Yeah. 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 You interpret it as you will. Less role-playing, more combat. Stab him on the head. Bop him on the head. Yeah. It seems strange that a thief would be as combat effective as a soldier in a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight. Everyone is as combat effective as everyone else in 5th edition. Yes. <laughs> Gotta have that balance. So we walk into the first in-room we can find. Yeah, you find an in-room. Uh, unless there's anything sp special you want to do about it. Uh, nope. Room and board. Yep. It's Five silver, which you already paid for earlier today, but whatever. Should have gone for a refund. Yeah. And Coolio, uh, the night comes, and I think this is a little bit early, but this is a perfect time to take our first break of Reno. Fair before enough. Before we head on to do something else. Um, fair note, we're going to do about three hours of Dicing with Death, and then we're going to make Ryan's character for Shenanigans. Oh. The upcoming show this Sunday. Holy crap. That's coming Sunday, right around the corner. Sunday, Sunday. Um, so we'll see you guys on the other side. Bye-bye.